Income Tax 2021-2022 Excel Worksheet. Create a tax formula worksheet using Excel part number two. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Here we are in Excel where we started to put together our income tax formula in a prior presentation. If you missed the prior presentation, you can take a look at that where we put this together from a blank sheet from scratch from nothing. Now we're going to continue to adjust it, put some formatting in it and also be adding some other sheets which will act in a similar way as other schedules and forms will to the main form that being the form 1040. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to add another column to the left and I'm going to try to indicate the activity that will be happening including adding or subtracting for example each of these line items to make it a little bit more clear just at a glance. So I'm going to put my cursor on column A right click on the whole column area or the selected area and insert which will push a column to the left on the left hand side here and then I'm just going to basically say what the activity is going to be so this is going to be a subtraction so I'm going to put a minus sign and enter be careful as you enter like a minus or equals because you could hit minus and if you start moving it'll try to put a formula in place which is not what we want we just want for example the equal sign here to indicate that that's going to be an equal component in our formula and then we're going to be subtracting so I'm going to put a minus sign the greater of the itemized deductions or the standard deduction and then we're going to get down to the qualified uh, business income which we're going to be subtracting as well and that will equal the taxable income so this is going to be an equal area and then we're going to have the whoop, hold on a sec equal and then enter and then we've got the average tax rate. So this would be kind of like a multiplication, which I'll put an X for here. Although it's not exactly that because we're actually backing into this number. This being a number that we're not inputting ourselves to calculate the tax, but rather one that we're going to back into because we don't have the actual rate because it's not a flat tax, but a progressive tax. And that will then give us, then I'm going to say this would be equal to, even though this is a number that we're going to be getting from the actual tax software because we can't really calculate it without a fairly complex calculation within Excel. And then we've got the tax credits. So I'm going to subtract the tax credits and then other taxes. We would add the other taxes because and it gets a little confusing down here as well. Note that up top you're talking about an income statement. So you've got income as the positive numbers minus all the deductions to get to, in essence, uh, the taxable income item. And then once we calculate the tax, this is kind of like the liability, kind of like the bad thing. And then we would be taking that and subtracting out the credits, which are kind of goods, but we're taking it out of the tax that we would owe. We add other taxes, which would be something like possibly self-employment tax, alternative minimum tax, possibly. And then we would get then to the taxable, the total tax equals the total tax then. And then we've got the tax payments and uh, refunds. So these are both going to be subtracted. The tax payments and the refunds will then be subtracted to give us the uh, tax due or refund. Tax due or refund at the bottom line. So now let's go ahead and center these. I'm going to select this whole column A and I'm going to go to the home tab alignment and center those, possibly making them a little larger too so we can emphasize those those actions that are being taken place there so we can do that and then we might want to try to add say colors involved to indicate whether basically it's a positive or negative so might may or may not be beneficial to you I think the colors sometimes can can add some benefit so I might say like the income line for example I might make those green by going to the font group up top and I want to enter a green here so maybe I'll use I'll use not on the bucket on the on the lettering I'll make that like a dark green, for example. And then on the adjustments to income, so the adjustments to income, let's make this a red. So this is gonna be a subtraction or red. And I won't put red always for just a subtraction, possibly. So we'll take a look at it later. It gets a little bit weird when we use the colors like this because on top we're looking at an income statement. So I've got the income up top, in essence an income statement, modified income statement. And then I've got the adjusted gross income. And then we should still have basically uh, income line items so the adjusted gross income I would still typically say is going to be a green item here right we're going to say that's going to be green typically that's kind of our top line number then we would be subtracting deductions which are kind of good for us 
but I'm going to put them as red because they're going to be basically decreases here. So I'm going to select these items and say this is going to be red, red for the deductions. And then we also have this one's going to be red for the deduction as well. And that'll give us our taxable income, which if we have any left over, will still be a green one typically. So I'm going to say item up top we'll make that then green we could do a conditional formatting here and say something like it's going to be green if it's positive or red if it's negative and then we've got the the average tax rate which is going to be actually something that we're going to back into and then notice down here we've got the tax now the tax that has actually been calculated based on the taxable income i'm going to think of on the bottom half of this as as bad right the tax is something that we owe so I'm gonna think about the tax as red. This is where it gets kind of flipped and a little confusing. Font group, I'm gonna say that's gonna be red down here. And then the credits are good because that's lowering, that's lowering the amount of liability. So we're gonna reduce the amount of the liability by the credits and the payments that we made. So this is gonna be good. I'm gonna make that green. And then the other taxes that we owe, which would be something like self-employment tax or possibly alternative minimum tax is gonna be bad. So I'm going to make that red. And then we're going to have the total tax, which is still bad. I'm going to make that red at the subtotal. And then we've got the tax liability and refund. Tax liability and uh, refundable credits. Those are good. So I'm going to make those green. And then the bottom line here is going to be if there's tax due, it'll actually be a positive number. And if you get a refund, it's gonna be a negative number, which sounds a little bit flipped. You could kind of adjust the signs if you wanted to, meaning you could calculate this as a negative number and have the credits be positive eating down the negative number. That's another way that you can kind of uh, see this, but you could use a conditional formatting down here to kind of remind you that we're kind of looking at this as a refund, which would be a negative number would be, would be good. So you might use something like conditional formatting up top, home tab, we'll get a little fancy here, styles, and go to conditional formatting. And I'm gonna hit the drop down and say, we're gonna say, if the thing is greater than zero, if it's greater than zero, I'm gonna say zero, but then we're gonna use it, we're gonna use that formatting. We want it to be light red with the fill red, red. So it looks like that. So that's a bad thing, I'm gonna say. And then I'm gonna say, okay, and then I'll use another conditional formatting, conditional formatting dropdown. And we'll say that if it's, if it's less than, less than zero, then I wanna make it green. Drop down, we're gonna make it green if it's less than zero. And so I'll say, okay. So then for example, if I had payments of 20,000, then it would turn green down there. And that would be good, even though it's a negative number the way the format of the formula is is being broken out here so that's going to be the general idea there we might also want to put brackets around this so i'll select the whole thing and say let's put some brackets around it possibly go to the home tab font group hit the drop down we're going to put some brackets in there put some all brackets and then i'll make this one a little bit smaller you could double click on it and that'll make it like kind of long enough just to have the actual function involved so there we have that. And then we could have some underlines. So I've got an underline here, the greater of, so we've got an underline here. We might want an underline here, font group underline, even though this one's a little backwards, a little reversed. Now this one right here, this number, I'm gonna be pulling that in from the tax software. So you'll remember that I can judge, I can verify this number up top by doing the data input. But this number down here, I'm gonna pull from the tax return and back into the average tax. So what I'm gonna do on this number, I'm gonna indicate that this is a data input field for me. And I do that usually with this blue color. So I right click on it, hit the bucket up top, and I go to more colors if you don't have it here yet. Standard, and I use that blue, why? Because the Excel is fun guy used that. And so I copy that blue. So there's that blue for my data input field. And then we've got the credits are gonna be subtracted, other, and then this is a subtotal, so I might want a underline here font group and underline so there we have that that'll give us the total tax and then we're going to say minus the tax payments and credits to get to the bottom line we might want an underline there so i'll go to the font group and underline it we might want a double underline down here so i'll go to the font group and put a double underline here 
Now, the reason I'm, I'm not gonna make all the top part blue, you might say, why don't I make that blue? I did the data input directly in here. I directly put in 100,000. Most of this other stuff, we're actually not gonna be entering directly into this page. We're gonna be pulling it from sub, sub ledger. So I'm gonna double click on the name down here and call this double click on this. We can call this the tax formula or in essence form 1040, right? The, the, like we say, we can call this the tax formula, let's say F1040 for form 1040. I'm not trying to be mad at the 1040, I'm not trying to say F1040. I'm just saying it's the form F standing, F standing for the form. So now I can pull this one to the left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this to the left. I could do that by, I usually say cut it, like right click and cut and put that over here. And I'd like to center it across the top. So I'm, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna select these and you might say I can merge it, alignment and merge, but I don't really like that because I can't, because then it makes this one big cell that messes me up sometimes. So I like to right click on it, the selected area and format it and then go to the alignment and then in the horizontal, we'll hit the horizontal and center it across like so, like so, and then okay, so there it is. And then let's make the whole thing black and white home tab and let's make the whole thing bucket black and letters white, letters white, bucket black. So there we have it now, it's centered across up top. So let's add at least one more of these of these line items to show you how this these, these will be broken out. So you could make it a, like a simplified thing and say everything that's income or most of it, I'll put it in another tab. So I'm gonna make another tab and put it as income. Or you can try to, you could try to like line it up a little bit more to the tax return. So for example, on the tax return, you're gonna say, well, some of the income line items they have on the first page of the 1040 and some of the income line items they have on a schedule one additional income and some of them might be on schedule D or schedule E or, or schedule D, E, F, so on. <laughs> so so we might try to we might try to mirror that so, so it'll tie in a little, give us a better idea of what's on the income statement. So over here, I'm gonna say, let's, let's make this income Let's say this is gonna be an income line detail, income line detail, and I'm gonna say F1040. Not like swearing at the form 1040. I'm not mad at the 1040. I don't like paying taxes, but I'm not like, I'm not like angry. I'm putting that there because this is the income stuff that I'm gonna say is on the form, on actually the front page of the 1040, which generally includes something like the wages, which is also on another schedule or worksheet oftentimes. So you can see it here but they basically put that on the first page of the 1040. So, so that'll be our most common one I'll start out with. So I got a new sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and format the whole sheet by putting my cursor on the arrow up top, or you can select Control A, right click and format it. And then we're gonna go, I like going to the first tab and say I wanna make it currency. And, and this time I'll make the, the negative numbers bracketed that's my normal default if I'm not gonna do any other colors to it because the red number can make it mess up the colors. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and say we want none on the dollar sign and I like to get rid of the decimals and okay. I'll scroll up on it, make it a little bit larger and I'll start to put categories here but the major category I'm gonna start off with is just W2 income, right? W2 income, colon. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some space because I could have multiple W-2 incomes down below, right? I'm gonna select the whole thing and make it bold too. So I could have I could have, and then I can like list the income. So this is, you know, uh, uh, employ employer one, you know, whatever the employer is, and I'll put the one hundred thousand there. Now I'm also gonna have you'll note with with like W-2 income withholdings that I'll have to put somewhere else on the payment line item that will go on the bottom. I'll put, I'll make another worksheet on where that's gonna go in the payment area. So I, if I go back on over, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a little space and say, okay, how many people might I have? I mean, possibly you're not gonna have too many people more that has more than, let's bring it down to there. That seems like enough room for W2 income. So let's make that, I'm gonna put the data input here so that's why I'm gonna make these items the blue. I'm gonna go up top and say, let's make this my blue and then brackets. So there it is. And then and then this is basically the header. You could make the header like a like a header label going up top and maybe go into the to the formatting, the formatting. 
Well, let's not do that. Let's just do our normal kind of, let's do our, our black and white thing. I'll go up top and say, this is gonna be font group. Let's make it black and white for each of our categories. And then I'm gonna have the total down here. So this is gonna be the total W2 income, income. And I'm gonna put that on the outside so that I can, so that I'm gonna put it outside here. So I'm gonna equal the sum, trusty sum formula of all this stuff. There it is. And I'll make that, I'll make that, should that be blue? Now I'll keep it as white because I'm not gonna change it. And then down here, I'm gonna have the, I'll call this the total income form 1040, the total income of the income lines I'm trying to indicate that are actually on the face of the 1040. We'll get into more of them later possibly, but I'm just gonna sum them up for now right here and I'll add more as needed as we go through our practice problem, but it's gonna be the sum of everything up top, which is just the W2 income right now. And I don't need to make it blue because that number's not gonna change. The only place I'm gonna do the data input is gonna be right here when I add new employers. Then if I go to the first tab, I no longer wanna just manually put in that 100,000. I want this to be coming from this tab. So I'm gonna say equals this tab, not that 100, not that 100, the total of all the 100s I wanna be pulling in to that number. So that's what we'll start to do later as we add more, as we add more kind of detail. Now, obviously I'm, this line item on income is gonna be quite complex because it's gonna be pulling in the stuff that's on the first page of the 1040 it will also be pulling in stuff from schedule one. So we'll have to look into that, make a schedule one for the income, schedule one, part one. It'll also be pulling stuff in from possibly schedule C, if there is one, schedule D, schedule E, schedule F possibly if there is one, right? So there's, so there's a lot of stuff that will feed in to this, to this first line item, which we can basically mirror with other tabs, which are supplemental tabs, which will pull into the initial formula. We'll continue on those next time.